We're here today with Bishop Hartmeyer, and the topic today is the Catholic Communication Collection, Catholic Communication Campaign Collection, which is a mouthful. Uh, so Bishop Hartmeyer, it's timely to be talking about that because the U.S. bishops have named you the head of the Catholic Communication Campaign Collection, chairman of that sub subcommittee. Yeah, the way I became um, chairman of the subcommittee was Bishop Burbage uh, from Arlington called me and asked me to chair the subcommittee. And uh, he is the chairman of the communications committee, and this is a communications committee campaign. So what the subcommittee does is it reviews the grants requests uh, from various sources, but mainly from the congregations and the committees within the USCCB to get their word out, whether it's Hispanic ministry or whether it's um, aid to, uh, to Eastern Europe or whatever they want to publicize. Um, and if there's an expense connected to it, then my committee reviews the request and uh, uh, grants you know, whatever it feels uh, uh, that, that it's worth uh, in terms of how we can provide. We only have limited resources. It's a national collection. That's the source of the, the income that we use for our budget. And um, the national collections is taken up once a year, but there's various national collections. And one of them is for the, uh, for the Committee on Communications. And uh, the incentive for this particular collection is that uh, every diocese is encouraged to participate in the national collection for communications. Um, and half of the money that is contributed by the faithful in that diocese will remain in that diocese for the purpose of communication. And the other half will go to my committee, which will then help uh, fund any requests for uh, uh, ways of communicating their particular need or how they want to evangelize uh, their particular uh, committee and the work of the committee. Uh, and so they will be uh, requesting funds to do that. It's popular here because of the fact that half stays here in the diocese. Yeah, it's a, and, it's a, very, yeah. it's a very good incentive. It's the only national collection that allows you to keep half of half, what you collect. Here. Right. So there is an incentive there for exactly. sure. You've always been a great advocate for communications. I remember when we moved here so many years ago, you wanted a studio here in this building for communications. Um, I'm, I'm get, well, one thing, you went to Raleigh and saw their studio, and you felt like we should have a studio as part of communications. Yeah, I mean, I think it only makes sense if we're going to do quality communications, whether they're audio or audio and uh, visual. Um, we need to have an adequate place and good equipment to do this um, because otherwise we would have to um, uh, outsource it. And to outsource um, anything that's, I think, uh, meaningful and well done and artistic and creative, uh, it costs a lot of money, um, probably somewhere around three or $4,000 a minute um, when it's all done. Uh, but here we have the talent in our own department of communications and all we needed was a suitable place where the sound would be quality and the camera uh, would be quality and so that we could promote our own needs here in the diocese for our people to become aware of what it is we want them to know uh, and information that we want them to, to have. And so it's worked out very well. Uh, we've been able to make several videos for a number of departments uh, to promote their particular message. And um, we have a, a beautiful studio. The sound is excellent, and the technicians are excellent, and uh, the, um, the cameras and so forth are, are state of the art. And e even doing that, you've also advocated for um, social media. You have your own Facebook page, uh, which is not every bishop has a Facebook page, which has been very popular. Well, it is. It's uh, been popular because it chronicles wherever I am, uh, wherever I go to celebrate church anniversaries or confirm 
the young people of our diocese or celebrate uh, the consecration of a new church. All of these uh, are ways in which we can let our people know uh, locally here within the Diocese of Savannah and even nationwide the kind of activities and ministries that are that are being conducted in our diocese and it's displayed uh, by um, using Facebook uh, and so uh, my uh, priest secretary who travels with me uh, takes the pictures and and posts them uh, on Facebook I wouldn't have the the first clue as to how he does it or how to do it, but it is something that we have control over so that it is a personal public page for me and for the work that I do uh, within the diocese. Uh, so our people get to know it. Um, you know, there's word of mouth, there's being, you know, being present at the event, people talk about it, but then there's an awful lot of people outside of where that event took place that would not have access to the information it may or may not be covered in our diocese newspaper. And of course, uh, they get the film and, uh, and the, uh, the text on Facebook uh, in real time. It's, it's done the day that the celebration took place. So it's very current. And at the same time, you haven't given up on print. You know, when you first came here, you immediately, almost immediately said, I want the newspaper to go to every household. You are a big advocate of print. Well, I think, I think the newspaper still has a, a purpose. Uh, there's a whole generation, if not more, that are not really too savvy or too comfortable going to social media for news. Uh, they would much rather sit down, as they have for years and years, with a cup of coffee at, at their kitchen table and read the, the diocesan newspaper as it comes in. And that's just what they're comfortable with. And so I think the digital age is upon us, but not everybody is on it or, or knowledgeable of it. And, and so it will take uh, some time, I think, before we eliminate the printed word um, and, and go completely uh, uh, on social media. But I, I think that's uh, probably a, a generation away that because we don't want to leave anybody out, especially the elderly, those who can't get out, those who don't have access to computers, th those that aren't familiar with it or uncomfortable with it. They still like their own newspaper and they can read it anytime they want. They can start and finish it. It can sit on the table and remind them that they wanted to continue to read it. They see photographs of people in the various parts of our diocese. They see uh, activities with the young people. They see uh, some national and international news regarding the church that's printed. Um, but primarily it, it's used to, um, to catechize, to evangelize. And uh, there's a great deal of news and catechesis in our newspaper. And, and so I still feel strongly that it should continue to appear in the homes of the faithful here in our diocese because um, it, it, it's more likely to be read and read completely as opposed to just an abbreviated form on your phone or on your Facebook and uh, it doesn't become old because it's always there until you discard it. Uh, and so it's visible more often mm -hmm. than something that might be on social media. So I think the printed word still has some life left to it, and, and we're going to continue that. With our half of the, our share that we get, and, and our, our campaign is on Pentecost, um, we'll use it for our website, which is another very important facet of what we do, and um, for our social media and uh, partly to help with working on the Southern Cross and also for our big cause that we have that not every diocese has a cause for the beatification of the Georgia martyrs for promoting that cause, um, getting the word out about it. Right, we're working hard on promoting the, the cause of five uh, Franciscan friars who came to the shores of Georgia uh, in our diocese to bring the word of God to the native Wali people who were occupying St. Catherine's Island and other parts of uh, the coastal part of Georgia. And so we've done a lot of research in, in the work that they did as missionaries. 
and they were martyred as a result of upholding the sanctity of marriage and, and monog monogamy. Uh, and so it's, um, so we want to honor them and we want to promote their cause and uh, present them to the Vatican. The cause for beatification has already been submitted uh, to the Congregation for Saints in, in Rome. And, um, and so we're doing what we can to get the word out and to increase a devotion to the uh, five uh, Franciscan martyrs of Georgia um, and pray for their um, uh, beatification so that they may con continue to be intercessors for our prayers uh, here in our local diocese and also to promote uh, the, the, the sanctity of, of uh, married life. So you're a great communicator. We just had mass. And even though you have a handful of people in there, you prepare a homily for every, every celebration we have. Confirmation is a big thing to you. For every child who comes up for confirmation, you talk to everyone personally. Um, it's just into you the, the communication is just. I, I'm very comfortable with re relating to young people. And I've taught in schools for many, many years. And uh, I, I enjoy relating to that age group, whatever, uh, whatever that might be, th seventh grade through 10th grade, 12th grade. Uh, they present themselves for confirmation. They prepare for confirmation. Uh, and I like to engage in a dialogue with them uh, to see how much of the faith they understand and uh, uh, the knowledge they might have about a particular saint that they've come across that, that has impressed them. Uh, I, I, want, I want our faith to become relevant to them. It's not just a history. Our church is alive, and, and the Word of God is, is alive. And the sacraments that they're receiving are not just ceremonies. They are true encounters with Christ. And the coming down of the Holy Spirit and giving them the gift of that Spirit, which would enable them to be courageous and to be uh, knowledgeable, to be holy, um, to, to give counsel and to and to have some awe and wonder with regard to knowing God and getting to, to have a relationship with him in a deeper way. They're at an age where they're very attentive and um, they, they listen to every word you say. And, and so I want to take advantage of that opportunity because I only see them typically once a year and um, confirmation is they only receive it once. And so because our diocese is so large, I, I, I many times will only see a particular parish community once a year. So I'd like, to make, um, I'd like to make confirmation a special experience for them, a memorable one. Uh, and, and they seem to take it very seriously. They dress very well. They've, they've had their retreat. They've done their community service. Uh, they've researched their saint. Uh, they're nervous about talking to me about their saint because it's going to be in front of their parents and, and sponsors. But nonetheless, they are um, excited about it. They're excited about confirmation because we have uh, maybe raised the bar a little on what we expect our candidates to know and, and how we expect them to be uh, when they receive this uh, gift of the Holy Spirit that they also make a big deal out of it, which is what I want them to do, because it is a big deal. It, it makes them fully initiated into the church, and I tell them that they're no longer observers in the church. They are participants in the church as full members as a result of confirmation. And so a lot of what I say to them, even before Mass and then during Mass, is oftentimes um, enlightening to them because they haven't necessarily heard that before or have not really had an opportunity to, to understand what's happening to them from, from that perspective that I might bring to them. Uh, many of them go to public school and so they don't have um, the religious atmosphere and the faith valued uh, education that, that many of us had where the sacraments were talked about often. But this sacrament is for them uh, at this particular age in our diocese. We, we typically confirm around the eighth or ninth grade and so um, we, I just find them more aware, more, um, more, uh, more attentive, and have the ability to understand in a deeper way of what's really happening to them in their journey of faith. Not everybody lights up like you do. 
to deal with preteens and teenagers. <laughs> well, I don't have to go home with them. <laughs> Plus, I, I know that you much more enjoy that than working in the office. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> uh, a week out into the field is better than a day in the office. Yeah. Because I'm with the people. I'm with the people that are celebrating something. Mm -hmm. They have a chance to see their bishop. Uh, I get a chance to meet them and to hear their stories and what they want me to know about illnesses in their family or discord or intentions that they want me to pray for. And this is what I feel is what I'm called to do as a bishop is to go out, as, as Pope Francis says, go out as a shepherd among the sheep. Uh, and I can't do that sitting in the office. And we have a very large diocese, 38,000 square miles, the largest diocese geographically uh, east of the Mississippi. And it takes a long time to get from one place to another but it is worth uh, every uh, effort uh, because uh, I get to see the, our people face to face and they get to hear me. Uh, instead of just read about me or, or just hear about me, they're able to, to see me and ask questions, have a picture taken, whatever they want. And that's what I, I want to be for them is available and confirmations help that take place. Well, you use all these means of communications which are wonderful. Uh, and I could talk to you all afternoon and then the people waiting for you in your office and all those piles of <laughs> un open mail that you haven't addressed since you've been out of town will, or will still be waiting. So thank you for your time this You're afternoon. We'll schedule another time when we can tackle other subjects, which I would love to do one all about Franciscans and all the different kinds of Franciscans and what you wear and all of that. All right. Very good. Thank you. Bishop. Thank you, Barbara.